There is no denying that technology continues to significantly influence the music industry. From creation to curation, digital has truly changed the landscape of the music industry. This is The Importance of a Digital Presence. Hello, everybody. How you all doing? And welcome to the music meeting. My name is J.R. Davis. I am the regional online editor for Radio 1 DC. And in today's panel, we're going to be talking about the importance of digital. You know, from the inception of music, you know, we've had many ways to promote and and, and put our music out there. But now um, in the stage we are, digital is now more important than ever. And we're going to be talking to three people who are pretty much people that I've worked with very closely, um, that I that I know and I trust with their knowledge to give you the knowledge of how to promote yourself, um, your music, your talents to the world digitally. Um, and I am going to start my introductions off with, uh, first of all, the executive producer for the Willie Moore Jr. Show. It's my man, Big Mad Mad Gordon. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. How you feeling today, Bang? I'm feeling oh, I'm very sorry. good, man. Uh, J.R. Davis, I That's apologize. Okay, man. I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to be technical today, man. J. Yeah, J. We'll, 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 hey, J.R. Davis, I apologize. But if the band comes Professor. out, that's all right with me. Um, okay. We, we also have the the Northeast, the Northeast Region Director of Mix Show, National Director of Mix Show um, of Columbia Records, Jason O.D. Griffiths. What's going on? Hello, <laughs> O.D., of course. Yes, What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? And, and last but not least, the director of content for Urban One Reach Media Radio One is AC The Plug. How you doing, AC? Doing well. Thanks for having me. Oh, man. I, I'm thankful for you all to join this conversation um, about digital media. We all work in dig digital media in some capacity. We have been doing this for quite some time. I remember uh, one of the first times I met Med, it was around digital media because we once worked yeah. at an internet radio station together. And he was on the forefront of a lot of this Ustream, StreamYard things uh, when it comes to radio. But bringing it into a music space and how mm -hmm. do artists really get into a space of how they promote themselves how they put their music out there um the blog era is an area that we're coming out of and i'm a product of the blog era because i've seen acts like chief keith um Le dirk chance the rapper and others really flourish from the blog era and now we're in the digital era so it's not necessarily sending a song to a a a a blog or sending it to you know a record rep and all of a sudden you're going to get the dreams of becoming a radio star now it's digital media where we have playlists we have TikTok, we have social media so man i'll start off with you what are some of the differences that you have seen in say the last five to ten years around how to mark how an artist can market themselves um in in the music industry you know what i it, coming from the gospel side of things on the willie moore jr show i talked to a lot of artists and i'm like why do you even need labels anymore you know it's it's like you know for a lot of these guys they can put out the music and and reap some of the benefits of course you know labels have a, a longer reach and can get you in places that you, you possibly can't get with just because of social media but because of social media because people have control over their images and their brands they can do so much more uh, on their own without um labels now the other side of that is now everyone's looking for the social media presence. Before it was like if you had a hot song and you know you had a buzz about you, you could probably get some uh, some um, airplay. Now, well, we want to see how many followers you got, how many um, you know, how, how many people are already playing your song. That's all. It's all changed with how people are looking at who's hot and who's not now. It's all about social media following and how many people are in the comments and how many people are sharing your things. That is how you know music is kind of identified now as being uh, being hot or not so that's that's the main reason how things have changed when it comes to marketing and music but for the artists you have an opportunity to really push your own stuff jason from a label side what are you seeing um that are differences from when you started um because i remember you telling us a story about how you started at virgin and and now you've gone all the way now to you know mix show director like what are some of the things that you've seen um from dealing with artists from a close standpoint being a rep who's probably walking them around driving them around um to interviews and, and wow, events yeah. how does that work on your end um well one of the things that i've seen that has changed over the years is you know there's there's no more 
there's not so much physical product. So you can literally release a song or an album within minutes and it can reach the masses. You know, back in the day when I first started, there was vinyls and there was CDs and there was tapes. So it, it definitely makes it a lot different now because it's like, it's so instantaneous. Like you could put something out and it can reach everybody at once. AC, um, we've known each other for years. I remember when you went over to, De to Detroit um, and I thank you for being like, you know, a, a step kid of Detroit for me because um, people like Said Ain't Tone and Ice Wet Vezo and Dage Loaf, I met through you and you helped them start their careers and now these are people who are, you know, some major artists. So tell us about what you've seen from helping them market their talent from your perspective. I think the biggest difference for me that I see is that the gatekeepers are no longer the gatekeepers. Are there gates? Maybe, but there's a lot of different doors to go around those main gates. And the machine that Med talked about earlier is there, but it's not the only vehicle to get you where you need to go. And furthermore, um, as everybody has alluded to, digital and social media is going to be the catapult for most artists coming out today and most artists who want to continue to stay relevant where prehistorically it was a matter of getting signed so that you could get on the road with somebody like Jason to then reach you know, our listeners at Radio One and that's still a vehicle. However, in most cases, since there is an oversaturation of content, there's an oversaturation of music, there's an oversaturation of artists and it's a great space because it, it changes the quality of the content coming out. However, for the artists, it's really making sure that you're using all of your tools at your disposal before you approach the label, before you get to radio because, and even the playlist, because one of the first questions that people are going to be asking is, well, how many followers do you have? Just like Matt alluded to earlier, where, you know, you only get that one shot for, in most cases, to speak with some of these people. And not to say that, you know, it's end all be all if you kill that first shot. However, you really want to make sure that you're tapping into the resources that you do have um, mm -hmm. to really catapult you. And as you alluded to, JR, in Detroit, a lot of the artists would come to me in Detroit to get that digital foundation and segue that into radio where, you know, that isn't always the norm now. Could it help? Sure. But, you know, the landscape has definitely changed. It's become more competitive, but it really has made the opportunity for artists to break a lot easier, especially if they plan ahead and plan strategically, because you don't necessarily have to have the machine as that starting point. So let's talk about social media. Um, TikTok is now the big thing. Before that, it was Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. But you really want to have a presence on everything because you never know who's there. Um, but followers and having a specific amount and even creating content. Um, Med, what are some of the techniques that you've talked to people about um, and to ensure that their social media presence is good enough to be seen by um, labels and, 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 and listeners, both casual and fans alike. I mean, it's kind of like what you just said, man. Um, I always tell people uh, treat social media like real estate and you want as much of it as possible. So I don't care if like, you know, the whole TikTok thing. Now you're seeing the older gener you know, the older folks saying, I'm finally on this TikTok. I'm finally doing this. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you need to be on it. You know what I'm saying? Some, some way, if there's a new hot social media app, guess what? You have to be on it. Um, you have to cultivate your, your brand the best way on each app, whether it be Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, because at the end of the day, Facebook, you, Facebook, YouTube and Instagram aren't going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. You know, TikTok is, is hot right now, but we don't know how long TikTok may last. Somebody else might come around and get something that might knock TikTok off its square because Snapchat was huge for like two years. Now it's TikTok. So but the things that are always everlasting is Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. So my thing is always make sure that those big three are taken care of. And then after that, you know, make sure you have a presence on all these other social media apps and, and, and keep pushing, keep creating the content. Because now with content, you can create that one piece of content and cut it up into so many pieces and put it everywhere that, you know, and then repurpose that content two months from now. It'd be the same thing, but a different part of that content you made is now repurposed and, and used again. So, you know, just continue to use every app as you can. 
Jason, how are labels using TikTok and other social media properties? I mean, <clears throat> when it comes to the TikToks and the other social media stuff, I mean, it's just it's, it's an amazing outlet. Like, you know, like you can reach so many people in such a quick time, like, you know, with these challenges that keep popping up everywhere, like, you know, people keep forwarding it and forwarding it and forwarding it. And, you know, it can be it can go from 1000 views to 5000 views to 20,000 views to millions of views in you know in minutes in hours in days and what's what's going on is you know if you have a record that is associated with the TikToks, it's just taking over the world we're in a music meeting the importance of digital panel uh, with ac the plug jason griffiths and big med the transition from um music marketing but just um record labels TikTok distribution um jason like you've just talked a little bit about that, but now we are seeing labels partner with TikTok. We've seen radio, in a sense, digital radio, um, partner with TikTok to make radio stations. So what do you think, um, let's just say in the next year or so, how things change? How powerful do you believe these social platforms would be? And what would you suggest to an artist right now um, who does not have a TikTok, who, who might be like, man, I ain't trying to do all that. I ain't trying to do no, have nobody do no challenges. Like what advice would you give that artist um, when it comes to TikTok and other social platforms? Um, like Med said earlier, you know, you want to make sure that you have real estate on all of these platforms. So, you know, you definitely have to be there. Um, you know, your job as the artist is trying to figure out how to get your music out to the masses. And these these apps have millions upon millions of people there and you never know who's going to hear it. You never know who's going to share it. So you have to be on these, these apps. Um, one of the things that I would say that artists need to be very, very aware of, of they need to make sure that most of their, or actually all of their social media handles is the same. So it's easier for these people to follow you and find you. So how do we, the artists get on some of these playlists and, and Med, from you, I'll, I'll ask even from a gospel standpoint, because I've never really seen a gospel playlist. I've never really seen people push that like that. And I think that when it comes to, you know, secular music, you know, we can see a playlist everywhere. But how does a gospel artist um, make it in this day with not just social media, but playlist? You know, the funny thing about that is that I actually try to create a playlist for the Willie Moore Jr. show. And... Um, it's, it's not as easy as I thought. I mean, yeah, I could create one. I can put the list up and I can post the list up. You know what I'm saying? But because everything's attached to like my name per se and not like the Willie Moore Jr. show, it was it was difficult. But if somebody creates a playlist right for Spotify and, and like, you know, there's Gospel Guru, there's a bunch of gospel, you know, platforms out there that they could that could create this uh, playlist. Radio One, you know, I'll call them the kings of gospel right now because they have so many gospel stations you know, underneath their umbrella, I think it would be great for Radio One to create a gospel playlist that is put out once a week, you know, that that right that would rival, you know, Billboard because then people could download it, go get it. But, you know, that that is relationships. That's, that's what it basically comes down to when you Spotify, things of that nature. Whenever I heard about somebody getting on a playlist, whether it be gospel or secular, it's always like, oh, man, I have somebody that works at Spotify. Look out for me. You know, it was always, always something like that. So it's always like a relationship that helps. If you have a song that's hot, you're going to be on playlists. If you are up and coming artist, you need relationships. You need to know people who have uh, you need to either hire a PR or hire somebody that, that knows people to get on these um, specific playlists to get your music out there. And I'd actually like to add to that, because I think there's a lot that most artists, uh, as they start out, that they're, they're really not hip to before you even approach a record release or a single release or releasing any kind of music, you're going to want to make sure that your work is copywritten, uh, making sure that you have everything to write, to properly copyright it with the U.S. Copyright Office. That's, you know, having mm -hmm. your lyrics, your annotation, split sheets and things of that nature. And then once you have your work uh, protected in the event that it ever goes to a legal route. And in that process, I definitely encourage people to not use samples because if you sample other people's work, then you're adding costs, you're adding a longer turnaround mm. time for legal. 
And hell, in most cases, you might not even actually get it properly cleared or limited clearance to where you may not be able to release it on every platform that you would like to. From there, it's making sure that you have your distribution in order from uh, getting with a mystery music distribution service like CD Baby to ensure that your music, once it's ready to be released, could then easily go from your mu music distribution service to the DSPs, um, like, and that stands for digital service providers like Spotify, YouTube, Apple, iTunes, all the ones that JR had mentioned earlier. Once you have all your business in order, um, and also considering your name, your website, making sure everything is the same, that's when you need to start crafting your marketing plan. And a lot of artists, they do this backwards. They have their music, they're ready to go, they put it out, and then they're like, they don't get any traction, now what? Then you, you're on social media and they're begging people to watch, share, listen, where had they done that pre-planning, they would be ready to um, release their music, which segues into my next point of making sure that you have a marketing plan. Ideally, your marketing plan should be three months out before your release. And if you do that properly, you're in a better position to make sure that your music is on all of the social media platforms so that when consumers are looking to create content around it, and we've talked a lot about TikTok and there's opportunity for dancing, partnerships, working with influencers, but if your music isn't there and isn't there legally, that may hinder you from working with a lot of these uh, platforms and these influencers and partnerships and other creators. Um, and then from there, really, again, it's just timing is everything and not only the timing and the planning thing, but also the time of the release. Now, there's no set magic. Uh, this is the time you should release music, but there are a, time, a certain amount of times that you should avoid. Um, as we all know, in the radio business, you want to stay away from the last couple months of the year. Reason being is um, at the end of the summer, beginning of the, of the fall, the big record labels are going to put a lot of money behind releasing their big artists so that they can swing into that first quarter of the next year strong, meaning that radio folks like myself, you know, we're working double time to make sure that we have that content out, that we're doing these interviews, we're creating all the buzz to really capitalize on our partnerships that we have as a business with the record labels and with the artists. And then also too, as we know, this is the very popular time because there's holidays, there's Thanksgiving, there's um, New Year's Eve, there's Christmas to where, you know, if you're releasing a, a, a project and you're part of your marketing plan is interviews and things of that nature, more often than not, a lot of these people are going to be out of the office um, because the industry almost kind of shuts down during that time. So just keeping those things in mind before you get into the distribution. And then there's a lot of different pro tips that I could share. I could go on forever. But for instance, if one of your intentions with your marketing plan is to get placement on the playlist, for instance, Spotify, if you're able to plan that upload, you know, a minimum of four weeks before your release date, there's a good chance that you will then be included on their weekly uh, release radar playlist. However, if you put it out, um, you know, this next week, it could take over a month for your new record to even resonate. But had you not done your proper planning and people aren't listening to it in that moment, then Spotify, Spotify's algorithm may not even choose that record to be featured on that particular playlist. And then, as we all know, we're coming out of a pandemic. So, you know, a lot of creators like myself and JR, we're very limited with our resources. So even if we want to help somebody, if you don't get with us in advance, even if we want to do something more often than not, we may not have that time had you not let us know sooner. And platforms like Spotify are no different where they're actually encouraging a lot of artists instead of having that four week minimum upload prior they're telling folks, you know, stick within five or six weeks for to even get a chance on being released and placed on their official uh, playlist. So now to switch it to radio's role in digital media, uh, man, what are some of the things that you look to create or you do on the Willie Mo Jr. show in order to spotlight artists on a digital landscape? On the digital landscape, um, you know, it's IG for me. You know, when it comes to the Willie Moore Jr. show, it's uh, we have something called the um, Holy Grounds, which, you know, is a battle that people choose and decide between two songs so they can be featured on the radio show two times per show for a whole week. Um, and when that comes up, you know, we use the IG stories to, you know, to vote, promote. We use the... Uh, 
our post, a regular post to, you know, kind of highlight it again and tell people to go vote. So that's like for the William Moore Jr. Show, that's the main thing. Um, if I had more people to, to help with the online part of it, I guess, you know, I, I, some of the stuff that I used to do, I would be able to do more of, which was, you know, New Music Tuesdays showing like the albums and the single releases, things of that nature featuring on on our social media. But that you know that's how we feature um, artists and give them an opportunity on the Willie Moore Jr. show and, and other and other shows definitely do that because the first thing I'll hear is like, well, is that big enough to be on the show? I'll put it on put it on social media and call it a day. There you go. But the social media interviews last forever. So, Jason, from a record rep's perspective, I know you want to go up in there and you want to get your bang for your buck for your artist that comes in, whether it's a new artist or whether it is a more established artist. And especially when an established artist, you don't want to go up in a radio station and get lackluster content. So what are you looking for um, to spotlight the artists that you bring into radio stations from a digital perspective? Um, well, for me, from the digital perspective, one of the things that I definitely love is things that show the artist's personality. Um, like it can be a behind the scenes interview, it can be, you know, like they can crack jokes with somebody, just stuff like that that can show these people's personality. Um, like Big Med said, the the digital aspect of these interviews, they last forever. One of the other great things about the digital aspect is even though the interviews last forever, we also get a chance to build with your fan base. So a radio station might have 90,000 followers while an artist might have 5,000 followers. This allows this person to actually get in contact with those people. So AC, I'm an unsigned artist. I'm a rapper. I'm JR Bang. I got <laughs> I got hot bars, and I'm ready for the world to see it. Like, what advice can you give me around content and in and, and ways other than trying to get somebody to do a TikTok dance? Like, what can I do in order to get my product seen um, by casual fans and um, and 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 labels and and people who can put me in positions to become a star. I think um, there's really two set answers to that question. The first being is making sure that you've done your due diligence to start to build and cultivate your fan base. For myself, even if there's an artist with say only five thousand followers, what I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is go and check how is their engagement. They have five thousand followers, but if they only get twenty three likes. To me, that's questionable because now I'm wondering, is their following real? If it's if it is, their audience isn't engaged. So what? Why would I think that my radio audience would? Why would they be engaged if that core audience, who was very intentional with their follow of that artist, aren't even engaging? Which brings me to my second point: is really mixing up your content strategy and realizing that your strategy one day should may change it's fluid so as you're creating content making sure that you have a photographer on site um, gaining photos of what's happening so that you can repurpose that content later recording behind the scenes content of you creating that song maybe working with the producer or just an average day in the life now you want might want to set some stuff up so it's actually an enjoyable something to watch not just following somebody out and about and then the actual content of the music so you have your actual audio file that'll go out to the dsps you've got your cover image you've got the behind the scenes and then um lyric videos and depending on what type of artist you are there's also live videos which will extend the life of your content and again putting that out mixing it up the social platforms and the algorithm loves uh, diversified t content types. And then just because something may or may not work, it might not even be the content. It could be the time of day or the day that you're posting. It could be the manner in which you're posting. You may not uh, be tapping into your full potential. So say for instance, if you have a newsletter, an e-blast uh, type of database, or you have a texting database, or you have a larger following somewhere else, just making sure that no matter where your followers are, that they can find your content. And then to that point, as you are uploading your content to say YouTube and to Spotify, you know, of course your name and your title and it is cool, but in that description, really thinking about if somebody does not know I exist, what would they search to find me, to find my song, to find this video? Um, and then correlating that strategy into 
how you release that content, but then also too being mindful that those same keywords and key phrases are the same thing that uh, music playlists are created and how people discover music. So it's there's really no hard, fast, right or wrongs. It's really just testing things out. And just because something doesn't work, try it again. And as JR and myself very intimately know, a lot of times it could take weeks and sometimes months for your um, social media and the algorithm to respect what you're putting out to actually resonate and start to show people. All right, so before I let you all get out of here, I want to get one big piece of advice that you could give to our artists how to expand their brand digitally uh, from each of your positions. So I'm going to start with Matt. Um, if I came up to you and I said, hey, um, what can I do on social to get your attention to possibly get my song on Holy Grounds? How do I do that? Look, I tell people all the time, I'm like, don't email me. <laughs> don't email me the song. I ain't going to see it. I, I get emailed by people that are important to me that I don't see their, their stuff. So don't waste time. We all are so, such busy people. Everybody in the industry is busy. Don't waste anybody's time. Don't, I, like, I don't need any, you know, creative or, you know, colorful way of showing me something. I just want to hear the music. If I hear the music and I like it, then I'm going to be interested in what else you got. But outside of that, just make it simple for me to get to. Don't be having me chase around and go to link to link to link to try to hear you. I don't. Uh -uh, I ain't that interested in you. AC, I'm trying to get my music on one of these <laughs> sites that you run. See, for me, I need that color, right? Because I need to ensure that what I'm putting out to my consumer is going to be engaging. Because if it's not inadvertently, it's going to hinder my own engagement. Uh, with the algorithms and the various uh, social and digital platforms, really just keeping the passion up and being consistent and making sure that you're following up. So if you met with myself or if you talked with JR, Big Matt has listened to your music or, you know, Jason sees the buzz that you have in the city. As we all know, especially in this media landscape, there's a lot of artists coming out that are just going to be one hit wonders. And with the hype of TikTok, even with my kids, they may know that dance, hit for hit, the record, word for word. And I'm like, who's that artist? They're like, well, I don't know. Let me go look that up. They're just going off of the hype where as yeah. an artist, making sure that that yeah. branding is there. And then when you do have those moments of those kids hitting their little dances or, you know, knowing your records, following up with those powers that be that you do know. Um, and just saying, hey, you know, I know we had a great chat. I'm still out here grinding. Here's how my numbers have increased. And then for myself, I'm like, yo, the last time I talked to you, you had this. And things that I look at that a consumer can, or an, I'm sorry, an artist can really tap into that they may not be aware of is how is the audience searching for you? Because it's not, it's more common for somebody to meet the song before the artist. So a yeah. lot of times when I'm talking to artists, more so on Clubhouse, I'm going on Google AdWords to see how many monthly average searches they have, which would tell me that in their metropolis or in the, the nation, wherever they're uh, bubbling, how many people heard of them some way, shape or form, and they're searching for that content. Basically, and, you can, yes. <laughs> basically, what you're telling me is that if I say I'm the biggest thing in Nebraska, you can go and see if I'm the biggest thing in Nebraska. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and Yep. I can even see if you've fluffed your numbers. I can see if you've got fake followers. I can see if uh, 10 people every month search for you versus 1,000. I can break that down if JR is like, yo, I'm from Chicago, but I'm hot in DC. I can geo-target, geo-segment all of those analytics and say, okay, I see you have a buzz in Chicago, but you don't have anything here. So unfortunately, a lot of times artists were told to fake the funk, fake it till you make it, where maybe you can do that with your lifestyle and the clothes that you wear, but those statements no, no longer resonate. However, no. that also circles back around to where if you tell me you're the hottest thing in the city, I might ask you for a video of you at your last club performance to see are they rocking with you? Mm. And if you don't have those things, whether it's that visual to prove it or I can't find you in my analytical tools, then at that point, now you're lying to me and I feel like you're trying to get me God. What what advice would you give to somebody on how to expand their digital footprint in order for an exec to be like, yo, I want to I look at this person? Um, one of the biggest things is relationships. 
what people don't realize is when you just start DMing people randomly, you know, DMs go into the primary spot and then DMs go into the general spot. That's a lot true. of people, it only goes to the primary spot if they follow you. So if you build a relationship with these people and start to have a rapport with them, um, you know, be like, hey, listen, I'm this artist. You know, I got this going on. You know, check me out. Hey, don't nag the person, but definitely, you know, hit them. Hey, did you get a chance to check it out? You know, once that goes on, I would tag them in the stories, like Med said, you know, um, and basically do it like that. If you come to me and say, hey, I listened to this jock and I know that jock hasn't even been on air for six years. Yeah. I'd be like, yo, you really haven't done your research to even know who we are, why you even want to be on our station, who is the DJ on each show that you really should be tapping into, because that's something that, um, and sorry to kind of carry over here, JR, but just things that I forgot is a lot of talent will get those links, like Big Med, right? He's the EP, but he's not necessarily the music director for the right. show. You know, if you approach a show like The Morning Hustle, sure, Headcrack or L'Oreal may listen to your record, but they're not the ones programming the mix show that happens during their show. So just making sure that you know who they are, it's great to know those people, but they're not the key decision makers, even if they liked your record. Now it's great to have another, somebody evangelizing at that table, as Jason knows, we've rallied the troops many times around records that we've believed in, but just making sure that you're being very intentional and going about it the right way and making sure that you're already capitalizing on the opportunities that we have available. And um, for me, it's just knowing your story. I think, as as you just said, I can give my music to um, The Morning Hustle. I could give my music to Ricky Smiley. I could give it to The Quick Silver Show. I could give it to every DJ um, on KYS, on Magic, on any radio station there is. But if I don't know your story, if I don't know who you are, if you're not interesting, I'm probably not going to listen um, from there. Um, so, man, this has been a great conversation. Thank you, AC. Thank you, Big Med. Thank you, Jason, for your time. Um, thank you all for checking out the importance of digital. Hopefully you got something out of this. And please continue to watch the music meeting brought to you by Radio.